Kia ora koutou. welcome to Inside Netball. We've got another big episode on our hands. We're going to dissect round 11 of the ANZ Premiership. Stacey Marinkovic joins us after she was spotted here in Aotearoa checking out the competition. And we'll have a look at the recently named English Roses squad for the World Cup. But let's get straight into it. Adine, Jenny, round 11, Central Pulse, they've locked themselves into a final spot. The first team to do it. Did we see that coming? No. Well, I didn't, and I probably should have. In fact, I had I got a bit of a surprise when I saw that that was their eighth win on the trot. And I think the reason I didn't see it was that because some of those wins have been incredibly narrow. I mean, they're, you know, really close. But I think they are building very, very nicely. Yeah, I think we didn't see it coming too. At one point, uh, back in round six, which actually just feels like the other day, because this, let's be honest, this <laughs> competition has gone. So they were in fifth position. They were in fifth, yeah. according to these lovely well, notes. Well, remember yeah. around that time when people were going from fifth to second and then first down to fourth and it was moving so much because it was so close? So, yeah, I'm not yeah. surprised. We're mystics. That. Probably when you look at this, the two consistent ones have been the mystics that have been at number one for a lot of weeks. They dropped into second recently and then obviously the steel down the other end. But we won't go into that. But, look, I thought the pulse... I'm with, I'm with you, Jen. I was surprised that they were up to eight in a row. Oh, no. That sort of also crept up on me quickly. But you do get the sense, or I got the sense after watching that game, out of all teams, when it comes to timing your run, I feel like they've got theirs bang on right now. They just seem to be building. What I loved was, well, one, they had an amazing start. They were up by 10 yes. after the first quarter. But I think what impressed me the most was every time the Mystics came back at them, and we know how quick the Mystics can score and how clever they are with that, you know, that connection between their two key down the attack end, they held it off. They didn't panic the pulse. They held it off. They repelled the fight back, and then they lifted again. And I think that, to me, showed the real character of that Pulse squad. And if that, if anything, that should be the piece that other teams should be scared of. Well, and speaking of character, the thing that I thought was, uh, the memory I took away with me was Amelia Wormsley. Yeah, absolutely. Boy, she was, you know, in the wars. Uh, and, I mean, I think you in the commentary said something about the coming of age because she stood up. Yes, there were tears, but she took it. She carried on. She carried on, and not just carried on, she sunk some critical, it got really close at the end. And she sort of, you almost could see her. She took a breath, reset herself, and then she absolutely nailed, I can't remember how, the last three or four goals. And I thought that was so impressive. You know, we keep forgetting how young, not just her, but Grace Wicky. Yes. I mean, she's, Amelia's 19, right? And yes. Grace is like 21. 21. So at either end, you have these absolute pillars of the game that shot both of them, well, Amelia had 57 attempts and Grace 51. I mean, <laughs> you'd be tired just in it. Yes, just just right. shooting, you'd be tired, <laughs> let alone all the work you had to do to get free and in position. Yeah, absolutely. And they ended up winning uh, that game by six. So not only, you're right, Adine, Amelia, shooting those crucial goals at the end, keeping the Mystics out of bonus point territory, yeah, which would have seen them qualify as well. I want to talk about Tiana Maturo alongside Amelia Wormsley because she put up 100%, 15 from 15. But you noted something, Jen, about her well, loading. It's just the way that she puts out the numbers. I mean, seven from seven in that first quarter and then two from two, two from two two from two for the mm -hmm. remaining three. Now, is that an issue? I don't know. I mean, I thought she played... Fabulously. I mean, yeah. she did so much court work. She, I mean, I don't know that that matters, actually. In that instance, I don't think it did. She was the absolute general down there. Yeah. And you've also got to give credit to Whitney Sooners. Oh, and Maddie Gordon. Let's be yeah, honest. MVP of that, that. Yeah, she it was, was a MVP. good team turnout, actually, wasn't it? It was but a good team turnout. And again, Yvette, she, no wonder we all picked her as our coach in the form team. Oh, I didn't. Oh, oh gee, I tell her. Oh, <laughs> well, you just outed yourself. <laughs> Who did you but, pick? Oh, well, actually, it doesn't, oh, it doesn't matter. Doesn't oh, she's not going to say. Tia Winokiri. Oh, oh fair. Okay. Yeah, fair yeah. call. But what I thought, again, Yvette in that game, you know, how she brought Paris on at different times, how she makes changes, she's bang on. Absolutely yeah. bang on. One thing, too, that a lot of chat around that game, that was the, I think, the fourth game Monica Faulkner has not featured in. And, you know, the Mystics this week have put out a statement saying, you know, Monica's taking some time out to attend to a, a private health matter, um, and they hope to have her rejoin the squad as soon as she's able. So, you know, we just wish her all the best. 
Well, we weren't the only ones keeping a close eye on round 11 of the ANZ Premiership. We can bring in head coach of the Australian Diamond, Stacey Marinkovic now. Kia ora, Stacey. Thank you for joining us. Uh, great to be here. Tell us what you were doing in New Zealand over the weekend and what you made of what you saw. Yeah, obviously with the World Cup coming up, we uh, obviously want to keep an eye on, on our opposition and, and obviously we know how different and diverse our playing styles are. So to be able to come over to New Zealand and see that um, in full flight um, obviously helps just um, put a reality around our thinking and, and, you know, just keep an eye on, you know, obviously you've got formidable players that are, are playing some great netball. So to get an understanding of what that looked like in, in real life. Now, you took over just a couple of years ago, and since then you've gobbled up and regathered all those titles that uh, mostly we had taken from you. <laughs> but uh, there's one that's outstanding. I mean, how much pressure is there on you to get this World Cup title back? Yeah, I think, you know, pressure's always perceived, and I think we've been working really hard at making sure that we've been growing our performance every time that we come together. And, and the reality is there's not many teams um, that have held a Commonwealth Games and a World Cup title at the same time. I think there's only two Australian teams that have ever done it. So it just shows how hard it actually is. And international netball is the tightest it's ever been. Um, so we are very much got our feet uh, firmly grounded, um, knowing that we've got a lot of hard work to do to be able to challenge and, and really go for that, that medal. Stacey, from what you saw in the weekend, what New Zealand's got and how they're playing at the moment, does that have an impact on your selections? You know, you've been watching obviously a number of Jamaicans and English players in your league. How does that affect how you then choose your squad? I think we've really focused on um, our group and, and obviously we want to be playing our brand of netball and, and challenging anyone with it. Um, so certainly... Um, our selection is really based on on how we want to play, uh, but I guess it's the awareness of of certain skills that are out there that we need to make sure that our players are prepared to face um, because they wouldn't get that in SSN or uh, at all. I guess we've got Jamaicans and we've got uh, English players in the league, but certainly we don't have the New Zealand style um, and particularly that offline. Uh, defence. So there's skill sets that we need to know what's happening um, and be able to challenge our players as best as we can so that they feel comfortable when they, they come up against the ferns. Stacey, I know we spoke to you on the broadcast when you were watching that uh, Tactics Magic game and you pointed out that you were keeping a close eye on Jane Watson and Karen Berger. What did you learn from watching that game and, and seeing them in person? Yeah, I think you can definitely tell that they're continuing to take their combination, but also their um, consistency of, of high-level play to another level. Um, obviously, they've had injury or, or come back from having a baby, and, and they were probably in the infancy, I guess, of coming back into international netball quad series. So um, they hit a high standard coming in in January, and we knew that Obviously, that build over um, a pre-season and then obviously playing a full season is is only going to reinforce their capability. So, um, yeah, interested to see how they progressed and um, they certainly have improved. And I think the New Zealand League in its totality is, is faster. There's the physical side of it. Um, you know, it was it was impressive to see. Well, you, I don't know if you were in Wellington on uh, Sunday night. That was a physical game, my <laughs> word. But um, what difference has it made, this ability now to take the three travelling reserves? How much has that changed your planning? Yeah, I think it's, um, I guess it takes to another layer of, of the backups that you've got and the, the variation that you can go to in the event that somebody did get injured. So I guess you, you're looking a little bit broader um, in terms of that protection. Uh, but I guess, you know, I think it enables us to be able to have a, a World Cup that's going to keep a standard um, that just because one player steps out, you're not going to lose the quality of the, the World Cup because of how hard players are going to keep going because you're not going to have to protect um, because of loading. Um, and I think that's something that's really exciting. But also, you know, I think it could also push teams to a level um, that we haven't seen if you've got all teams having full complement for an entire series. 
Now, on this side of the Tasman, we're hearing, you know, a bit of unrest in Australia. Netball, obviously, there's no collective agreement. There's talk of a potential IPL. Collingwood, you know, there's things potentially they're not there. How much of a distraction, or is that a distraction, to the girls leading into a World Cup? Because, obviously, you know, they don't potentially know exactly what they're going to be doing next year, next season. Yeah, I think the, the Diamonds is really good about um, being able to focus on the things that we can control and the thing that we can control most is our preparation. Um, it's our performance out on the court and, and obviously I have a, a role to play in the organisation and, and that is to, to coach the girls and, and lead and connect um, to make sure we've got that cohesion amongst the group. So um, World Cups, as you know, don't come around regularly and um, it's a moment in time and it's a moment in time that I, all the girls are really focused on the performance and whilst there's things that have been worked out, we've got to rely on the experts within our organisation, the Players Association and our clubs um, to do their part and, and we've got to play our part in the performance. You named a squad of 19 not that long ago. When do you trim that down to the 12 or 15 actually now? Yeah, we've got a, a few weeks to go um, before we actually have to, to nail that down a little bit further. And, um, you know, the, the competition over here in the Suncourt Super Netball is pretty ferocious at the moment, particularly the top four teams. Um, I'm not sure where they're going to finish. So um, the intensity, uh, the pressure that's mounting on players to be able to get um, the wins and things like that is exactly where we want the competition to be. Um, so, yeah, it's going to... It's a headache to have, um, but at the same time, it's a, it's a privilege to be able to, to have the depth that, that we have at the moment. Any players on this side of the Tasman that, that caught your eye? I mean, would you like to name your New Zealand side here for us now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, got, I've just got to focus on my own team, to be honest. I certainly wouldn't want to be trying to speculate into to op the opposition. But I think, um, you know, I think you guys have a, a headache as much as we do in terms of how you want to run your, the mid-court. And, um, you know, you've got some pretty good experience at both ends of the court and, and some strong leadership. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure Nolene's having a fun time as, as much as I am trying to pick apart and try to foresee what, what's going to happen. Um, and, you know, it's great to be able to make those those calls when you get to tell players that they're going to a World Cup. And on the flip side of that, it's it's absolutely devastating to have to also make the the other calls. So it's um it's an emotional roller coaster, um, but it's part of the job and you know um, as you guys would with the connection you have and the culture you've created in your group is everyone's there to play a role at a particular point in time and um, yeah it'll be an exciting World Cup. And so looking ahead to the World Cup and the end of the Sun Court, when do you get your hands on the girls and what's the plan in that we gap that you have? Yeah, we've, we've got a little bit of a different setup here. We're going right till the end of the Suncourt Super Netball season, which finishes a bit later than, than what the ANZ Championships does. Um, so we finish the grand final and pretty much on the Monday after we're straight into camp. Um, so we'll do our preparation here in uh, Melbourne and then we'll uh, head over to South Africa for a little bit more training and then obviously straight into to the championship. So it's a, a short preparation, um, but we do... Um, I guess back in that some court super netball is a, a high intense environment and um, you know it's our ability then to get the the connection amongst the players to the diamonds brand of netball um, uh, going. You touched on it earlier Stacey and mentioned that yes I think the midcourt is our kind of headache area here in New Zealand. Is it the same area for you over in Australia? Yeah well we've, we've had quite a bit of depth I think across our midcourt for a little while now and um, each time that we've played a different um, tri-series or a quad series or Constellation Cup, we've certainly used our depth and, and rotation to, to see what players can do and, um, you know, players are really stepping up and um, I guess that's the exciting part is it's getting later on in the Suncourt Super Netball season. Um, the the midcourt is incredibly tough, um, but, you know, that's the, the, the part that, you know, has got to link each end of the court for us and they play an, an incredible role. Is it tough for you, um, Stacey, that Sophie Garbin is playing out of position uh, for her franchise? Does that present any problems for you? No, um, we've had full 
full oversight of, of, you know, obviously the role that Sophie plays within Collingwood and there's attributes to her game that have evolved because she's been playing in a different position. So I guess you take those strengths and what they've got to make sure, um, and this is what we, we've got a really great connection with the club, is that she's able to practice the skill sets that are required to be, a, you know, a, a high volume, accurate shooter for us at the same time. So um, whilst we don't see everything week in, week out, there's certainly a lot of work being done behind the scenes and um, she knows what's required of her to, to get that selection. You touched on before the, the strength of world netball. You know, we've definitely got more than just two teams or three teams that we once had. How worried are you about Jamaica? Because we're pretty worried about Jamaica. We're worried about you, but we're pretty worried about Jamaica too. Like they, how good are they getting, particularly because they're getting such great experience in Australia? Yeah, I think there's six six Jamaicans in our league, um, if you include R- Ramelda in that, as and whilst not being um, directly in their international side lately. Uh, and they hit the season flying, there's no doubt. They have incredible skill sets. Um, there's a lot, obviously, in that defensive end for a start. And Janelle is obviously a, a, a standard to her own. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're tough, there's no doubt. Um, they're obviously evolving their game plan, their getting a lot more belief and have certainly mm-hmm. evolved their high performance, um, you know, behaviours by being in the, the Australian um, franchises. So it's, um, yeah, it's incredible for World Netball, but yeah, they're, they're hot. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess it's, um, I think when you've got um, individuals that stand out, particularly like a, a, a Janiel or a Shamira, um, it's going to be the best team performance um, versus team as opposed to um, just relying on an individual to get you over the line. And just quickly, speaking World Netball, we've just seen the English squad named. What have you made of that squad? A couple of players in the SSN as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, obviously they've gone um, a little bit different in their, their shooting circle with Joe's retirement um, and obviously using that as that swing across. So um, it's interesting to, you know, take note of, of the variations that they can go to. I think it's, um, you know, it's it's got a fair bit of defence in it. So I think they're really going to try and pressure um, and, you know, get in the contest and, and do it repetitively. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I think the same. Whilst England haven't had the success uh, at the Commonwealth Games, um, they've got experience in that group and they've got young ones that will be jumping at the bit to be at their first World Cup. So you can never underestimate the new and you mix that with the experience, then, um, you know, certainly they can be deadly on, on their day. So every team's going to have to bring their best and play at the most consistent that they can um, to be able to get these results. Absolutely. We cannot wait for this World Cup. Stacey, thank you so much for joining us on our little show and I hope you have a great day. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Stacey. Well, yes, very interesting. And here is the English squad. If you haven't seen it yet, Jen Adine, for me, it's short on shooters, I reckon. Well, the shooters are there. Of course, Joe Harton's gone. Um, and then there might be a few names there that people aren't so familiar with. I mean, Olivia Cheen, she was at the Commonwealth Games. She was at the Quad Series, but relatively new. Um, How's been Cardwell? I mean, Cardwell is just shooting up a storm in Australia. Uh, but the, for me, I was, I was going to be interested to see whether or not Jess Thurl will be stuck with the, um, I was going to say the old girls. I say that with a huge amount of respect. Jeeva Mentor, Jade Clark, Adine, you should be playing. They were in Jamaica with you. <laughs> I, I was playing when Jeeva debuted against Irene. Yes. I mean, that's, that's how long she's been around. But they're still going. And, and look, it comes around every time and people say, oh, I don't know that she was. But they both have maintained some form. So, I mean, I would have picked them. I mean, um, what, Jade's 39, Mentor's 38. I don't think... That those are just numbers. Mm-hmm. But Sixth World Cup as well. Yeah. Six. Equaling the record of um, Rhonda John Davis from Trinidad and yes. Tobago. I mean, it, it is incredible. I mean, it is just, incredible. Going back to the shooter's point, uh, you can see that they've named Nat Metcalf as kind of that fourth shooter. Mm. But you'd also expect her to be their starting wing attack. Why is Sophie Drakeford-Lewis part of the reserves? Why is she not in the team? But is, is that again because... if 
goodness forbid something happens, they know they can make the change now. That's the difference, right? Because if someone did get injured, they can bring her in. So it is a bit of a risk, though, because you are relying on actually someone getting injured. You can't just swap them. So, yeah, probably a big call. And as we heard from Stacey chat then, very defensive heavy. So is that kind of giving us an indication of the style of play that England are going to want to do. And that's going to be shutting down these very tall shooters, these very mobile middies. So I don't know. I think I found it really interesting. I was reading a couple of articles and I saw one from Tamsin Greenway comment on the squad. And she's obviously ex-English player, coach of the Scottish Thistles. And she described it as it's a it's a tried and trusted squad but I think she as an ex-player was hoping for something a little bit you know whether they took a bit more of a punt you know took a couple of bolters and and made it a little bit more maybe dynamic and exciting but I don't know it's a hard one isn't it Jen because the Roses I mean they were winless in that quad series until the third and fourth playoff that's South right, Africa. yes. I mean, they haven't had a huge amount of success in oh, recent times. I tell you, that Commonwealth Games last year, when they, and because they are always confident in England and, and good on them, you have to be, but they had gone in thinking that they were going to retain that title. And, and then, of course, they went home with nothing. And, and I mean, my favourite memory of Birmingham is that playoff for the bronze medal when they'd beaten us earlier. And of course, then we got there and it was marvellous. But um, I wonder, you know. Jess Thirlby might be perhaps a little cautious. I mean, I think mm. in Cape Town earlier this year, she was there was a lot of perhaps unrest um, that we we were hearing about uh, within the camp. Now, I don't know if that's true, but I, I, I am a little surprised to see Chelsea Pittman there. Yeah, um, you know, uh, and you know, Fran Williams has never set the world on fire. Well, in my world, but um, you know, I'm wait she's young and she's probably got a lot of time in, uh, ahead of her. But yes, I would perhaps agree with Tams in a little bit, uh, you know. And of course, we don't know who else is out there. But England, they have, a, you know, a ton of players, and one of them to watch is Fumi Fadoju, this defender. Wow, from um, London Pulse, she really caught my eye, and I actually I was impressed with Cheen too. So, you know, there's no Probably doubt. Young players, and they're young. Players they're to young. watch. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to talk about Fidoju because you'd probably assume she'd be the starting goal defence at the moment with the way she's playing, which means Layla Gusketh will be put out to wing defence. But they've named like six wingdies. And Layla's included as the circle defenders. And then you've got all these players who specialise in wing defence. Is it a matter of them just not having other people there? Do they want the experience? You see Laura Malcolm, who we've got used to here playing in New Zealand, and playing a bit of centre. Do you think she's done enough to warrant that selection, given there's quite a few players who play similarly to her in England at the moment? Well, Gus Goth, to me, is the one who got away in a way. Because, you know, that World Cup in Liverpool, when she did that Achilles, yeah. they were on course. I couldn't help but feel. But uh, we all know what happened. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, and, and since then, I haven't seen a lot of her play, but I've, I've seen some of it. And I don't know that she's quite got back up to that level yet. But, you know, she's a big time player. And, you know, I wouldn't put it past her just to rise to the occasion in, in Cape Town. And we know, like, if you look at the World Cup when the Silver Ferns won, who, who was our key people in that year? It was our fossils. Yeah. The ones that had been at big events. They knew what it was like to have that massive week having to play it you know, going from a game that you win by 30 to a game that's going to be close. So is that the way England's going? They're going with their few of their, and we, we're not trying to be rude about ages or anything, you know, a couple of their fossils, the people with experience with a little bit of newbies in there. So I don't know, but I do, I agree with you. I feel like it's cautious. They've yeah. gone cautious. You could call it well-balanced. Well-balanced, yep. So yeah, yeah, well-balanced in terms of experience and youngies, but maybe not well-balanced with the way the... You know, the court is mixed up. I don't know. Something mm. seems off balance to me in terms of attack versus defence. Well, I hope you're right. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> True, I hope I'm right too. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, moving on from, from World Cup chat, let's just quickly look at round 12. Huge game this weekend. Stars, Mystics. Extra time thriller last time. What do you guys think? Oh, my God. Well, just about every game yeah. is, a, is a thriller, yeah. and I just can't wait. Um, well, I think the Mystics have got more at stake, but then you turn that round the other way and you think, well, no, the Stars have got just as much on the line. Mm -hmm. So it's all going to come down to, if we pick it apart, bit by bit, that first game. Yeah, there's going to be. Pulse yeah. tactics. If the tactics lose that, they're, they're gone. gone. They're gone. Yeah.
so okay, we can deal with that then. And you'd, I would be, oh, I don't know. You see, this is what I was going to say. <laughs> I would be expecting the polls to win that. Yeah, I, I agree. I and I, but I don't. We love the fact that we've got down. When I can't, I'm trying to think of what other years we've got down to literally the last round, round. literally the last round, um, and we don't know two spots. And yeah. potentially, yeah. depending on how those first three games, it could come down to the last game. It could because it's oh, Mystics could. Tactics that last game. So, you know, three of the four games this weekend are going to have a huge impact on the table. So. Perfect. I mean, that's the perfect scenario for a competition. And that fourth game could see the Steel get their first win of the season. Fingers crossed for that. So plenty to enjoy on Sky Sport this weekend in round 12 of the ANZ Premiership. That is all from us here on Inside Netball. See you next week.